Now I have had a shed load of requests to cover the subject of today's video, the Nokia 5.4, a fresh budget friendly smartphone launched early 2021 here in the UK. I've been pestering the PRs for weeks, they haven't had any review samples, but I went on the website and you know what, it was in stock, 159 quid, free delivery, so I said sod it, I'll just bloody buy one. So yeah, tonight I could have been quaffing the finest single malt from a pint glass, but instead, here's a full Nokia 5.4 unboxing with a full review to follow. A new buggers definitely owe me, so please do poke some subscribe and ding that notifications bell if you haven't already. Cheers. All right, let's dive on in. So what you're getting here is, of course, a phone, porky pin device to get your SIM in there, a highly arousing Type-C USB cable, and a three pin plug with pop-up action. Nice. And that's your wax, sadly. No condom case or anything bundled in there, so that's a bit of a shame. Now, from a design standpoint, the Nokia 5.4 certainly closely resembles a lot of other budget-friendly Nokia smartphones that I've tested and reviewed over the past few years. What you get here is a glossy plastic back, and it looks like it might be textured from the sort of mottled appearance, but it is actually perfectly smooth. And here in the UK, you can pick up the Nokia 5.4 in two different hues. This here is the dusk purple, which I really, really like, actually. It's kind of a dark, mysterious hue. Got a lot going on. Otherwise, you can also grab it in polar night uh, which is basically just dark blue and the nokia 5.3 is only a 6.39 inch but it certainly feels bigger than that it's got quite thick bezels surrounding the display especially on the sides as well it's definitely got quite a bit of girth to it but despite being made of plastic the nokia 5.4 feels reasonably sort of sturdy a little bit of flex in that back end which naturally sounds absolutely filthy as you can see there you got a rear mounted fingerprint sensor quite a common feature for a budget smartphone and thankfully that camera array doesn't jut too far from the surface of the smartphone. Anyway, that's enough uh, preliminary waffle. Let's get the Nokia 5.4 all set up and take a full on tour of the rest of the specs and the hardware. Oh, still brings a tear to my eye. And while I'm slotting my SIM inside, it's worth pointing out as well, there's actually room for two SIMs inside of the Nokia 5.4 and also a separate slot from micro SD memory cards to boost the 64 gigs of onboard storage. Lovely stuff. All right, so I've just spent an hour setting up the Nokia 5.4 and getting to know it a little bit better as well. And what you got in here is Android One. So it's basically a stock version of Android, same as every other Nokia smartphone out there, basically. You got your Google Discover feed. If you flip up into the apps tray, uh, pretty much everything in here is either stock Android stuff or it's what I've just installed. Very little, in fact, no crapware whatsoever. It's a nice lean machine is the Nokia 5.4. Distressingly though, it is the old Android 10 rather than the fresh new Android 11, which was launched at the end of last year. Um, so you don't get any of those fresh new features, but apparently the Nokia 5.4 is Android 11 ready. So oven ready, if you will, for a nice bit of fresh Android 11. Hopefully won't be too long waiting for that. And one of the great things about buying a Nokia, besides the fact you get that stock Android experience, is the fact that you're guaranteed at least two OS updates. That means after it gets the update to Android 11, you can also expect an update to Android 12 come probably the end of 2021 slash start of 2022. And that's as well as three full years of monthly security updates as well. So at least you'll know your Nokia 5.4 will stay fresh for the foreseeable. Unfortunately, quite a lot of these budget-friendly stock Android smartphones from the likes of Nokia and Motorola they now do come with a Google Assistant button here on the side. It's a physical button. Just push that and it loads up the Google Assistant as you can see there. And I've got to admit, I'm not entirely sure why that button even needs to exist because you can easily access the Google Assistant by swiping up from a bottom corner or by tapping this little microphone button on the search bar. And you can disable that physical Assistant button by going to System and then diving into Gestures and then it's down here at the bottom, Google Assistant button. So you can just give that little tappy tap tap and then it will be completely useless as opposed to something that's absolutely and totally useless. Uh, but unfortunately, you can't actually remap that button to load up an app of your choosing or something, which is a real shame. I don't know why they do that. So far, no worries whatsoever with that rear-mounted fingerprint sensor slapped on the back end of the Nokia 5.4 either. Just a quick tap your digit to that. And, you know, not exactly the, uh, the most responsive, not the fastest of unlocking actions, but you get there in the end. And one of the few additions to the stock Android experience that you get here on the Nokia 5.4 is a bit of face recognition as well. That's something you don't tend to get with like the Google Pixel phones and the rest. So basically, if you just tap that power button, it will then try and recognize your mug. Again, it seems a bit lethargic, just like that fingerprint sensor, but it does get there in the end. And also very important for a budget smartphone as well. You've got full NFC support on this bad boy as well. So you can use the Nokia 5.4 for your contactless payments, obviously uh, becoming increasingly handy in this covid -y world. But apparently that is a feature that varies by region. So if you're not in the UK, then definitely check the specs for your region to see if your Nokia 5.4 will come with that on board. 
Now that screen is a 6.39 inch HD plus IPS panel, so fairly sort of standard for this sort of budget, although you can find full HD plus displays on the likes of the Poco M3 if you hunt around a bit. Just a nice bit of sharper detail. I did notice when watching, you know, Netflix or Disney Plus or whatever, sometimes you're watching a movie, the finer detail is definitely lacking. Some of the images look a bit grainy, especially when you pull out, do a nice crowd shot, something like that. Color reproduction is fairly subdued as well. Definitely don't expect poppy, punchy, vibrant, visuals or anything like that. Brightness levels on those uh, top maximum settings are just about enough to uh, to comfortably see outdoors uh, but on a really sunshiny day you probably will be struggling a little bit to see what is going on if you're trying to read an email or something. Uh, as for the viewing angles as you can see they start to dip uh, once you tilt the phone away from your face the image gets significantly darker but nothing too horrendous. As for the audio, well it's a mono speaker setup here on the Nokia 5.4, again pretty standard for budget blow, so just a single uh, output down here. Uh, let's boost up the speaker and see how good it is. Oh, flash you cheeky f***er. Oh, reaches the parts that other disinfectants can't. <laughs> so yeah, not too surprisingly that speaker is rather tinny once you boost the volume all the way up and not particularly loud either, but never fear because you do get da -da -da -da, a headphone jack here on the side of the Nokia 5.4 right on that top edge and you do have Bluetooth support as well, though it is only Bluetooth 4.2 uh, which is quite an old standard, bit surprising. Now powering the Nokia 5.4 is that Qualcomm Snapdragon 662 chipset backed here by 4 or 6 gigs of RAM depending on which model you go for. This is the 4 gigger and as you can see there the Geekbench scores are basically what you would expect from that 662. The same chipset incidentally banged into the recent Moto G9 budget smartphones and a few others. Now what I'd expect from the Nokia 5.4 is for it to handle everyday life absolutely fine, no qualms or complaints. Probably see the odd little judder as you're swapping from app to app or something like that, but nothing extreme. Certainly should be able to deal with pretty much anything you throw at it, even some like gaming, uh, certainly likes a Call of Duty and stuff played fine on those Moto G9 handsets, so it should be fine here too. The only real question is how does the screen responsiveness and all that handle uh, gaming as well, which I will answer in my full in-depth Nokia 5.4 review, tease tease tease. And banged inside of this wee beauty. You've also got a 4000 milliamp cell, which again is fairly small compared with a lot of the competition. The likes of the Moto G9 Power, for instance, has a 6000 milliamp cell, as does the Poco M3. But those Nokia handsets tend to be very energy efficient, helped along by the stock Android vibes and all that good stuff. So I'd still reckon you'd easily get a full day of use out of this, probably well into a day and a half, maybe even two at a stretch. And it is a mere 10 watt recharging speeds here on the Nokia 5.4. But again, budget blows don't tend to be the nippiest when it comes to powering back up. So let's finish up with a squint at the Nokia 5.4's camera tech. And what you get here is a quad lens setup, because uh, of course a lot of budget smartphones have to pack at least three or four lenses in there. Don't get too excited though, because besides the 48 megapixel primary lens, you've got a basic five megapixel ultra wide angle lens, a depth sensor, and of course the obligatory macro lens. And I'm just so happy whenever I have to test out a macro lens that I do a crap little jig. And it's actually a really busy camera UI here on the Nokia 5.4, standard for a Nokia smartphone. And if you prefer something that's a bit more streamlined and simplified, maybe check out a Motorola instead. But once you sort of learn the lay of the land, it's not too tricky. So for instance, you can quickly swap between that 48 megapixel primary lens and the wide angle lens uh, with quick tap down here like so. You can also swap to that macro lens as well if you want to get a nice up close shot of an insect or a flower or a little lego guy whatever you fancy the shutter speed seems relatively nippy here on the nokia 5.4 not too much hanging around and the autofocus touch wood doesn't seem too lethargic either and as is now standard for a budget blow you've got a wide range of uh, different camera modes as well so for instance a bit of portrait mode action if you want to add a bokeh style background effect you've got a variety of effects you can actually choose from you've also got a night mode which sometimes isn't found on these budget smartphones that'll just take lots of different shots at different aperture levels got to hold really still while it's doing that and then it'll meld them all together into hopefully what is a brighter more natural looking result. When it comes to video, you can once again shoot with that ultra wide angle lens if you want, or just stick to the primary sensor. And as you can see there, there's no 4K option on the Nokia 5.4, but you do have a bit of full HD at either 30 or 60 frames per second. And Nokia seems to be taking some inspiration from Sony Mobile as well, because what you got on the Nokia 5.4 is that cinema mode, which we've seen on a couple of other Nokia phones. What this does is it allows you to shoot home movies in that cinematic 21 by nine stretched format. Uh, which is very funky indeed. And you've got a variety of filters that you can play around with as well to get different kind of moods. And as you can see by the stats up here, that actually shoots at 24 FPS. 
but I will of course be fully testing the camera tech for my in-depth Nokia 5.4 review, including that 16 megapixel selfie snapper as well, because I adore taking selfies of myself. Absolutely love it. And that right there is the reason why I'm just so goddamn photogenic. So that right there is just an early look, a bit of a tease of the Nokia 5.4 ahead of my in-depth review, where of course I'll be fully testing out the gaming chops, the camera, tech, all of that good stuff. I'll be using it as my full-time smartphone basically for the next week or so. So stay tuned for my in-depth review towards the end of next week. But if you've got any burning questions, any thoughts, if you've actually been using the Nokia 5.4 yourself, definitely please slap those comments down below It'd be great to hear from you guys and for more on the latest and greatest tech please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell cheers